This is the Conscious Planet Network with your host, myself, Guyana Sophia. In these episodes, we'll be diving into inspirational stories of change, new technologies, and people really making a difference. There is just so much going on on the planet right now that is helping to change humanity, our planet, and the future, and we need to know about it. So be sure to subscribe to the show so as not to miss any episodes. The Conscious Planet Network is an exploration of the evolution that is already in progress, one that you and I are a part of that's happening on an individual and global level. There are so many people right now who are contributing to changing the tides of our future. Are you ready to be inspired? Hello and welcome back everybody. Change happens on our in our world, not only with people making big changes on a global level, but also people who are making changes at a grassroots level. And that's why I invited Ali Khoi onto the show today, because she makes these beautiful body products and they're all natural, they're organic, They smell amazing and it's important for us to realize that when we're doing, when we're wanting to step in and uh, live our dreams, because this is Ali's dream, um, it's important to recognize that every little bit counts. Every, you know, it's like we are all contributing, even if it's music or we've always wanted to be an accountant, (laughs) all of these things. Um, It makes many of us to fill in the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. So it's really important to get authentic with what it is that we're here to do. Some people, it's really easy to tune into that. Like, you know, they, they already have inklings. And then there's the people who don't even know what they want to do because they've been maybe falling into, um, jobs or sometimes it's just that we took other people's advice over our own beliefs of what we should be doing and so to get back in alignment with what our hearts are wanting to do I'm going to share a little story with you in my later 20s I started to question about what am I doing here what is it that is really passionate for me And I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of credit that I was giving. Like I I thought that, oh yeah, this is all, this is going to be my, you know, (laughs) my hobbies or, you know, it's not going to be, you know, something that I make money from. Um, Because at that time it felt like, you know, there really wasn't a lot of people doing creative things around me. And that was also partly to do with living in a city and um, there was a lot of corporate, um, Canada going on. So I started to study about Montessori. I I believe it was Montessori. It might have been uh, Waldorf and um, how they taught their kids. And part of the teachings were to help the children learn what they're most interested in. Now, this may seem really normal for some people, but for me, it was really like an eye opener because it was like the things that I really wanted to learn right then I could start believing in. I just had permission to start believing them in them and start to take steps towards uh, learning about, you know, learning about these things, having them more in my life. And it was because there was a whole system that was built around it. There was a school system that was built around it. And so I, I gave that a lot of authority and good. I'm so grateful that I did because it really woke me up. It really started to open my eyes to what was important for me. And as I was taking the journey, and this did start as a part-time thing, as a hobby, and you know, all of my interests and, and everything started as a hobby. And so as I was spending time doing them, then I got to uh, get the sense of exhilaration um, that and feeling of aliveness and connectedness and excitement for being in this world again. And it was so exciting. I know this can be hard for um, our fast paced lives at this time and to, you know, put our, you know, to make any space, any room for our own interests. Sometimes that can be, you know, challenging, but it's one of those things that I found that if I don't start making steps, then time just 
ticks away. And, you know, in two years from now, I could be looking back thinking, oh, I'm still in the same place. You know, I haven't really done anything in that area and I really wanted to. And how come I haven't, you know? Or I could be like, oh, look at all this that I've done. And I'm like five, ten steps ahead of, you know, where I was or even a hundred steps ahead. And so it's really about self-care and self-love and believing in ourselves that we can do these things no matter what it is. And part of this Montessori teaching was that the children, um, it, it's basically uh, bringing out their genius. That was the whole um, idea behind it was to really access their genius um, because it was an innate thing that was coming through. And those dreams that are inside of us are are a part of our genius awakening. And so the more that we can get in touch with them and attuned with them, then we can start to wake ourselves up and really start to get into the, the ride for what we're here for. So with this episode today, Ali and I are going to be exploring ideas of how to juggy and juggle a busy life and prioritize the things that are important. And she's also going to share about how writing a book has helped her with a big relationship issue that she was facing and how that's affected people who've been reading it. We're also going to take a little bit of a side tour and talk about how she spent time writing in a cabin in the woods. And she's going to give advice for people who want to start taking steps towards off-grid living. All right, without further ado, here's the interview. All right, so we're here with Ali Koi. She's an author of the book called Unpacked. She is also a radio show host, and she has a business called the Barefoot Daughters, which is a botanical body care products business. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Barefoot Daughter Botanical Body Care. That's right. Yeah, that's awesome. You're so busy. Very busy. You've got so much going on. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> and today you just had your uh, your farm day, so you're mm-hmm. you. you I'm, pr- I'm stretched pretty thin, uh, <laughs> especially these days with with the book launch and trying to keep up with the orders for the business and growing the business and having a book and still doing the podcast. Yeah, it's like I want to do everything all at once, and it's everything I want to do, but also exhausting as well. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, well, maybe we can work out some strategies later mm-hmm. on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But um, I think you're a beautiful example of, like, uh, someone who's really living their dream out, you know, mm. really believing in themselves and stepping up and doing the things that they love. And, and yes, it is, you know, it's like we do need to have self-care and we need to, like, look after, our, you know, all the emotional and physical needs and mental needs Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it last night it's like I do what I want but work really hard to do that I'm Mm -hmm. working almost all the time it seems but doing these wonderful things I'm passionate about but it just takes a lot of hours and a lot of mental focus and putting myself out there and and also having time, yeah, for myself, with for my partner, like uh, at my cabin and my community and trying to be present for everything. So the last few months, it's been a bit of a struggle balancing it all and having that confidence of like on one hand, I can do everything. And on the other, I feel like I'm like letting things go and in other ways. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I feel like like because I'm a I'm a real like motivated person too. I've got like often I've got like so many things going, and um, it's <clears throat> it it's juggled all around self care. So it's like how can we how can we you know step in and not spread ourselves too thin, you know? Because when it's like these these things that we want to we want to bring to the table are actually more important than we realize you know and and at the same time we are more important than them and so uh it's it's definitely finding that that inner balance 
And sometimes it means pulling back from things, you know, stepping in 10% of the time, you know, for, uh, you know, t for 10%, you know, to try something out and, or 10% of our energy, using 10% of our energy <laughs> and trying it out. And then um, realizing, oh my gosh, this is actually gonna, this is gonna break me. So I, mm. I you know, it, how important it is it, or, you know, are other things more important that, or less important that I can take out and like, it's that yeah. whole juggling. I do, yeah, I definitely have to figure that out my my priorities of what is really important to me right now and and also how I can work it out financially and like <clears throat> you know having a part-time job and and making it all work and I and feeling I want to be totally present with everything and but also saying no to things are important as well um so yeah, I'm I'm figuring that all out, and I'm preparing for a big trip in a month. And That's right. It's your your book launch across Canada. Yeah, across Canada, Canada, Canada. Canada. <laughs> it feels like yeah. so epic. Here I come. <laughs> yeah, to the East Coast. Um, yeah, and actually, even on top of that, so my partner and I, like romantic partner, um, are going all the way to the East Coast, and then. From there, I fly from Halifax to London and go to Europe uh, for a 10-year reunion with friends who are in the book that I wrote about. Oh, my gosh. So that was my original deadline. A year and a half ago, a friend, we all worked together at this hostel, The Flying Pig, in Amsterdam. And a friend put on Facebook, it's going to be a 10-year reunion, September 2019. We're going to rent uh, I'll go to this hostel that an another friend started uh, in Croatia and in the back of my head I'm like I got to finish the book by then because it I'd been working on it for five years and I'm like I can't go to a 10-year reunion meeting these folks I haven't seen in years and not have this book done so and and can I just interject mm -hmm. that this book is a is a memoir of that time yeah period. it's a travel and, memoir yeah of my time in Europe so, and how sweet would that be to come with Books yeah for them. exactly <laughs> exactly and so I worked it my worked it out I looked at the calendar and I said okay I turned 33 that June 11th before the September and uh, I'll have the book launch then I'll and I'll just work make sure the book is finished and go through all the stages to have the launch and and that worked out I mean I had the launch on June 11th and now I'm in this whole cross-country trip and going to Europe and <laughs> it's pretty wild and uh, and yeah I'll see them and I'll see family as well and then revisit some of the places in the book too you know five between five and ten years later mm. so that preparing for the trip is yeah taking a lot to do but um but then it'll be worth it. It'll be on the road. It'll be seeing the East Coast again, where I totally. went to university, and yeah, Some yeah, good times. doing all the things, but working really, really hard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you know, this really does bring up such um, a thing. It, it's it's like a, a um, an issue that I think a lot of people are dealing with now. Is that you know like. When we're when we're in spirit, things happen very fast, and you know it happens all over the place. And but when we're incarnate, it's like it takes time to make things happen. It takes effort, and it takes determination. Um, and uh, I think this time period feels a lot like um, there's so many changes that are happening on the planet, and there's so much uh, at stake, and there's so much uh, you know it it, it basically. Part of the change uh, that I see is is people really stepping into their their work that why they're here and, and you know the more that people align with their work and why they're here and tune into that, um, the better that our world's going to be. That's like our personal contribution. That's one of the things we can do. And then once we're in the work, then it's like how do we moderate it? Because sometimes it can feel like huge learning curves and like, you know, big things that are, you know, coming up, how to juggle time, how to juggle all of these exciting ideas that we want to do. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel because with the book especially, I I've been working on it for the last six years behind the scenes almost. I I had 
writing self-guided writing retreats in my cabin or <clears throat> you know constantly working on it in a writing circle every month but not really posting about it just focusing more on the business uh, the soap um, barefoot daughter business and this year well basically since September 2018 but yeah no more t 2019 I've been stepping more into the spotlight it feels like with this is what I'm doing this is vulnerable for me but sharing that on a wide like very detailed account of these years that not everyone shares of their mid-20s experimenting in Europe and <laughs> you know totally sex drugs and side trance and, <laughs> and which side trance the side trance side trance it's um it's a type of uh electronic music that's oh, okay. popular in Europe uh, I thought it was you go into a trance from sighing uh, <laughs> 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 that would be fun <laughs> I bet people have done it, especially sure here on Salt thing. Spring. I'm sure that's a, <laughs> yes, that side. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just ex just exposing myself in that way and just feeling confident in it, like a part of me doesn't doesn't really mind, you know. Does it like I want to share that story, and it's an important story. It's not just about frivolous travel. It was. Um, it's also based around uh, a relationship that turned emotionally and verbally abusive. And mm. I've found myself in the woods in the Pyrenees, not able to escape like physically or emotionally. Wow. So it starts off there. And then I have a decision to make whether to stay or leave and how I'm going to do that, whether to book a flight or, or not. And, um, and then it flashes back to how I ended up there. So I was backpacking, I was working in tourism, I was partying and doing all the things 20, you know, 25 year olds do. Most of most people, <laughs> um, not everyone, but uh, so there's like funny moments, there's wild moments, but there's also very intense emotional moments that were really hard to write about, but that that was the base of like needing to get this story out feeling like this is the story that I have for other people going through a similar situation or you know wanting to see from that perspective how do you feel like this story impacts people as they're reading it well yeah I've gotten some really good feedback uh, I'm it's very vivid like I'm very detailed and really bring people in people say it's kind of like a movie almost like they just jump into it they get pulled into this story and I think people are feeling less alone in I share like deepest thoughts and and fears and insecurities and um what I was going through at the time so I'm hoping people will get out of it the, the ability to share more themselves and to feel less alone because mm. at the time I felt so alone I thought I was the only one going through this mm. this very specific mm -hmm. relationship with this person who's not unlike anyone I've met and then later hearing other stories from people in similar relationships it's like oh actually my partner did the same thing and he would say the same stuff and and all these red flags that I see now and mm. that are in the book mm -hmm. so the reader knows it's a tumultuous relationship so that it's like they know more than the care like me in the in the book mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i'm showing a very like naive but optimistic and brave version mm. of myself mm. and the reader's like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like he seems romantic and fun and loving but like, red, red flags yeah the red <laughs> flags are there and yeah. so I think people will get a lot out of it and I've heard some really good feedback so far. What I really like about stories like this is that um, sometimes we don't, like you were saying about feeling alone, sometimes we feel alone in things, sometimes we haven't articulated what's happened, you know, in our lives and sometimes these things can really hold us back from like having more another relationship or you know whatever the the trauma may, may, may be in this terms it would be in having another relationship or really feeling free in a relationship 
you know, to be yourself, um, to really open up. And part of, you know, growing as humans <laughs> is that what I've at least come to terms with and, and realize is that um, we need to spot the things that are holding us back. Um, and start doing the work around it in order to like really create the lives that we want. And so I celebrate you in so many ways for really bringing this up to the table and being that vulnerable. Um, I know that it does take a lot to be vulnerable like that. Um, I've done some YouTube videos where I'm just like, I'm laying everything on the table and I'm just like, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm like, you know, but it's like I do it because it's, it's, it's giving people permission to like go into whatever the feelings they're having around it. And same thing where people are like, they can't stop watching and they just want to know, you know, that, you know, have a, a better understanding of what's happening. So thank you for doing that. It's like a th big thing to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for me, it was very therapeutic, obviously. And, you know, some people, uh, tend to push those situations to the back of their mind. And I, actually, I did do that at first in a way. I went back to Toronto and and I was um, so cut off from any input when I was in the Spanish Pyrenees because there was no Wi-Fi. There was barely anyone to talk to because everyone just spoke Spanish and not a lot of English being spoken there at all not a lot of music and like you to you know any fresh voices or stories or music I was just cut off from so when I got back kind of into civilization I just overindulged in like binge watching shows on Netflix and I was like kind of wanting to distract myself sure. because it was so painful yeah that the fact that I was yeah, in that situation and I think we all do that, you yeah. know, it's like, it's like we need space to be yeah. able to start processing. Yeah. You know? And then part of it is it's always been writing for me to process things. And so I just got into writing, a, writing about it. And I had been keeping journals and very detailed accounts along the way. And I do tend just my person, I don't know if it's my personality type, but I like obsess over things that people do say to me whether it's good or bad so these words kept cycling in my head so I just had to get them out on paper and then it and then I got into the Humber um, College of Creative Writing in Toronto mm. so I started shaping this book out of it mm. and then just I, another kind of naive but brave thing of like oh yeah I'll write a book didn't realize you know six years later yeah, putting the final edits on yeah. it um but for me to get it on, get it really shaped into a story and for me to realize like, okay, that is, that is what happened. Like, cause you can be like, how did I end up in this relationship? And how did I, how did I end up in the woods? And this isn't what I want, which is like such an extreme way of giving up on society. It was mm -hmm. like an hour's hike from where you could park. Like now I am living in the woods in an off grid cabin again, but totally connected to society and mm. like doing my part within that mm -hmm. so I just and also the relationship I had to figure out like what I believed in and what what I thought was the right thing right way to live and not just supporting my partner's vision of what he wanted to do so nice um and that takes a lot of um introspective uh, introspection as well as self-value mm -hmm. to get to that place mm -hmm. now could you tell me a little bit about like or can we talk about um your lifestyle because it's wild it's wonderful like you just touched in on it and it's um I love that you're off the grid and that you are also connected but and you are like you're creating so much <laughs> and yet yeah. you're totally like you're off the grid but do you have solar panels I just got a, you... I got a solar panel in September so over the winter, I couldn't really use it too much because um, I am in the woods. And, but since April, May, it's been great. I have light in the evening. I can play a CD player and <laughs> charge my phone <laughs> if I want to. But it's still quite cut off. It's rainwater catcher, you know, rainwater shower and 
on demand propane um and it is it's very quiet and i have limited you know data on my phone but it does help it prevents me from kind of going overboard on scrolling through facebook for hours and like i can't do that there so it's like a little oasis but but yeah lifestyle is having that quiet place where i can kind of reflect and have my space from the chaos of the life and then i just want to not just talk about things like i actually i'm a doer i'm quite a doer (laughs) i don't want to just be like oh i want to help the environment but i'm like okay I'll, how can we do that? Yeah, how can we do this? Let's take, let's make steps. Let's make a plan. Mm, um, beautiful. So just following through on those things I believe strongly in, and uh, yeah, using solar power and and rain water, and then my soap business is on the grid. I do, you know, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, and I use. Um, electricity for making the soaps but i do use rainwater i'm just i'm just trying to do what i can as like as a producer of things for the environment and for the people for the community i think it's baby steps yeah because we're so uh we're so hooked into uh the grid and the system that it's like you know to think that we could just like voila you know we're off the grid and we're doing it all off the grid yeah uh could could bring a lot of disappointment yeah and so like lots of compassion and recognize there are steps to get off the grid if that's you Mm -hmm. know what you know what we want you know if that's something that we're called to do i have a balance yeah because in the pyrenees there was no balance it was yes this romantic idea that oh i'll have time to write i'll have time to be in the woods and study herbal medicine but actually it's just basic survival it's cut off from everything yeah and an hours so, walk in that's like hardcore yeah, yeah. yeah you have to and that was if you had a car and we didn't have a car so it was like a four-hour hike oh my gosh and then hitchhike that's into super the town. isolating so yeah. isolated yeah. it was beautiful stunning mm-hmm. untouched it was in this national park and we we're living in this like stone ruin like this ancient stone ruin oh, of a house wow. and but at the same time totally dysfunctional community and Mm -hmm. partnership and um but yeah having the balance here so you know i'll download a few podcasts listen to those at the cabin so i still have i'm still connected to the outside world Mm -hmm. it's just in moderation yeah yeah and you know living in community is very particular as well some sometimes people think that living in community is like oh yeah we're all going to live together and we're all going to cook together and we're all going to do everything together um there's so many varieties of living in community and you know i i think um like living in uh different houses on the same property is really appealing for some people you know living in one house altogether is also really appealing for some people and you know, having a tent community, you know, there's just different varieties. Mm-hmm. What's yours like? Uh, yeah, d- people have different houses and cabins and, and then we come together on farm day and we have lunch um, together and yeah, but we all have our own lives. We're all, I feel like on Salt Spring, it's also tricky because it's so beautiful here and there's beaches and there's trails and the, you know, it's so idyllic, but it's, you have to hustle. You have to really work hard to, to pay for the food and rent and to make it work. So, so many people are working like four or five part-time gigs to make it. And I find I haven't had the time to fully, um, enjoy all the things that salt spring has to offer Mm. i'm always always mixing work in with it Mm. like if i go for a walk i'm like wild harvesting uh plants or taking a selfie with a nettle yeah like oh (laughs) here are the properties of nettle and yeah exactly i'm oh i have this mind of because i'm half in this really natural world and half in the online world because i have an online shop i 
I've been promoting this book launch, which take like marketing. I'm, I have like a marketing brain and, you know, witch in the woods brain. So it's trying to balance those and make it all work. And yeah. Would you have any, um, well, I, I think that the living off the grid is a really, uh, amazing idea on amazing idea for a lot of people, especially as our, you know, it's like as we're taking back our power, <laughs> literally, you know, from the big companies, we're becoming more self-sufficient um, and it's contributing to, you know, our future, right? So would you have any uh, any suggestions or ideas or um, advice, that's the word for it, um, for anybody who's thinking of living off the grid? Yeah, um, there are some things to get started. I mean, if you're renting a spot it's easy to fall into like well i'm not gonna invest uh all this money into a place i'm renting but with a solar panel you can take it with you when you go so you can it start saving up for a solar panel or a rainwater catcher you don't have to be disconnected from the from the grid to get those things you can actually if you have excess uh, excess power you can feed it back into bc hydro and get some money back i don't know so much about that part of it but that's if you've got a lot of solar panel solar yeah energy if you through. have like x if you don't use it all yeah. but um there are programs on salt spring through tsec transition salt spring enterprise co-op that if you want to get a rainwater catcher they'll it, it, it could be around you know a thousand dollars or something which not everyone has definitely to put pay up front but tsec they have this initiative that how, how do you spell that t-s-s-e-c okay thanks and they are giving out micro loans for people who Ooh. want a rainwater catcher so you can pay a monthly it's like a payment plan so they'll give you the thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars up front and then you can pay, I don't know, $100 or $200 a month to pay it off. So there's there's ways that you can do just where you're at now, um, leaning towards it. And also for emergencies too. Like if you don't have a supply of water uh, in times where the water's cut off, it's it's a huge deal. There have been, there were some earthquakes this morning, and so people really uh, not here, oh, but okay. on but close by. Um, I think on the, I think on Vancouver on the west side of Vancouver Island. Mm. So cl anyway, it's just these little things that wakes people up to being prepared, being more prepared, mm -hmm. in, and you could get the candles and the oil lamp, and just in case that did happen, or or have. Um, one day a week where you don't use electricity and see how that feels, see mm. how dark it is in the evening mm. <laughs> and, and like, Oh, maybe I should get a headlamp and, mm. and rechargeable batteries. And it, mm. cause it only, you only become aware of it when there's a power outage and then you're scrambling. Yeah, totally. But if you put on your calendar, like once a month, even like, okay, this is a no electricity day. Mm. Oh, can't blend those coffee beans can't make a smoothie uh the fridge i mean I, I don't expect people to unplug their fridge for the day i guess but it's all those things you don't really think about until they're gone i actually lived off the grid for a year as well and um mine was finite compared to yours um and it was a 10 minute white uh, walk into the woods to get to it and it was just the most oh, most beautiful experience super shamanic super connecting to nature and I learned pretty quickly about how important it is to have a house that uh, can keep the heat <laughs> that doesn't leak heat out and um, what good firewood is uh, how to choose firewood and um, and yeah and water issues as well as uh, Basically, I, I, I dug a, um, a cooler into the ground to make a fridge because uh, the ground was quite cool. And so when I came off the grid, when I came, sorry, back on the grid, um, I was actually singing songs of hallelujah because <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, I need a recording studio and this is just not going to mm -hmm, work. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
I made sure that I had the basics. I made sure that I had all the candles in the right places, like candle setups, so that if the power does go off, I know, you know, I'm going to, you know, I've got candle, a candle over my burner. I have a propane stove, so that's not going to go off. Um, you know, so I can use that through anything that's um, uh, when when winter comes. And so, I, I mean, or um, uh, if the power goes out. And so there was this whole like mentality. And, and also, I wouldn't, I won't ever go into a place now that doesn't have a, a fireplace mm-hmm. because uh, at least here on Salt Spring, uh, power outages happen all the time. And um, people who uh, don't have fireplaces, they have to really work hard to uh, warm up the house or go somewhere else to like mm-hmm. live with someone else for like, you know, a few days or weeks. And so it becomes a problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just you realize how reliant we are and then and also um having that space away from noise and from Mm. distractions more or less uh i was able to complete the book that i so Mm. i made a few writing retreats where i stocked up on food and propane and water and just you know dove in for five days um a couple times i did that and I could just get in that world, which was hard as well, because a lot of the moments were really, like, very intense sure. to relive. But um, but having that space, I could create. You hear of a lot of people finishing creative projects in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it does take discipline to actually to do it. I think one of the benefits of being in the woods is that things can slow down if we allow them to. And that is such a blessing for this time period because things are speeding up so quickly and people are becoming ADD really fast. Like it's happening more often than not um, because of the um, internet surfing. So we're, our attention's being like taken all over the place and people's free time is taken up on the computers. And so we have kind of lost touch with um, that slowing down listening to the crackles of the flame of a fire and knitting or doing a prod you know doing a hands-on craft um yeah tactile yeah yeah i noticed that too because i i can get wrapped up in working all the time and i you know till midnight or on the that was before i lived in the cabin it running a business there's just always something to do. So sure. you can always work. Absolutely. And so especially your own business. There's oh, yeah. always gonna be something that yeah. you're just learning. You're always gonna be learning. You're yeah. always gonna be changing things. So just having to just being forced to slow down. Like last night I was gonna um go I was in the cabin and I was gonna go back down to my studio and work into the evening. But I was like, oh, I'll just have a nap. And then I ended up sleeping for like a couple hours. And then I woke up. I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere. And I didn't have my computer. My phone was running out of battery. And I didn't have my charger. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to read a book. I'm just Mm going to like listen to some CDs, which Mm -hmm. is used to be how people would do it. You know, know. like I have five different CDs. I was like, I'm just going to like listen to this music and, and read this book and it was yeah i needed it i definitely needed it instead of like dragging myself out of bed going down you know doing all the things i need I, there's a, a huge list of things i need to do but also taking that time for myself is so important as you as you say as totally. well and i'm tr- trying to do it it's uh yeah well, what i've recognized is it's like being able to uh notice when there's like a compulsion to do things Um, and when it's in conflict to what our body our mind our emotions really needs Um, and so that's where that's when there's like um, when the conflicts there it's I think the most soul supporting thing we can do for ourselves is really be honest about what we really want to be doing right now and if we don't do this this and this you know, is the world still going to be okay? <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, are things still going to be okay? Because we can put way more importance on things to our to do list than we do with our uh, emotional, um, our emotional selves. And 
this is a time I, I feel really strongly that it's for reclaiming our emotional selves within the to-do list, within, you know, our acting in the world. Because if we don't look after ourselves in that way, then we're going to be doing all of these things, but we're going to burn ourselves out and we can only, it'll be like, there'll be a time limit, you know, for how long we can do this until we have to stop everything. You know, it's like Crash. a can't totally. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a big paradigm shift. Like things are changing right now. A paradigm is like a, a way of doing things, a way things have been done. And so we're coming out from a place of like uh will driven, you know, um, uh, doing things from our intellect into a place of what feels right, what feels right. And part of that big leap is trusting that things are going to be okay. Um, if we tune in and we really are honest with what we need to do, like have that two hour nap, give ourselves permission. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I'm doing the best I can. And so I, I try not to get too like down on myself because I'm accomplishing a lot and like totally hyper productive um which also isn't like the healthiest to be hyper anything isn't, <laughs> <laughs> isn't uh but I noticed in the book too I it was like I was going through this period of uh hyper sexuality actually and then now it's almost been replaced by hyper productivity so I'm looking back on how I was in my 20s and I'm writing you know it's in the I'm writing about it or I've written about it and it's like accepting that side of myself but I don't see that in myself now it's more it's kind of shifted over to like throwing myself into work throwing myself into what I can offer to my community that's not hypersexuality <laughs> <laughs> but it's been an interesting yeah look into that and also sharing those things in the book like sometimes people buy the book I'm like okay here you go <laughs> like <laughs> oh you're gonna know this and that and that part and maybe skim through those parts um but now I now what, that I'm hang on uh -huh. what do you mean skim through th those parts like what well because you don't want them to there's know just about like certain things, there's or? sex scenes uh -huh. and it's one thing having a fictional story with a sex scene in it and right. that's another with a memoir yeah having a detailed sex and so like scene is and so you were meaning like if this person you're like not sure about yeah. and you're like oh just, <laughs> you might... know just jump over that sex yeah. scene because like that's pretty vulnerable for me <laughs> A little okay, bit. Okay, yeah. okay, just so I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is a reveal all book. <laughs> it is. It is. And so it's called Unpacked. Yeah. Unpacked, and, a memoir of checked baggage. And where can people get that? Well, they can get it either directly through me at the market. So um, the Salt Spring Market, the Salt which Spring is on Mar Saturdays. Yeah, the Saturday yeah. market until the end of July. Or She might I tell you to skip over a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah. Chapter well, 12. Well, yeah. um, now this is going to make people flock to you. Uh, you realize that. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you can also get it at Salt Spring Books and The Mercantile. And a few, and Bolin Books in Victoria. What about anywhere online? Amazon. And okay. I I also printed through Ingram Spark, but they feed into all sorts of, um, like, similar to Amazon, but in the UK, in Australia, in the States. So if you just uh, look for... Ali Koi, like unpacked by Ali Koi, and it will wherever you are, it will okay. mostly the paperback is available. Great. And what's your website if people want to get a hold of you? Yeah, barefootdaughter.com, B A R E foot. Um, and for the book, it's slash unpacked, but barefootdaughter.com has all the info on it. Right. So they could actually access the book via that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they can put an order in and I can ship it to them or. It also has a link to the Amazon. And I've just got to say your your products are so yummy. It's like the, I mean, yummy for my skin. Yeah. Um, I got like a couple of them at the Man Hall mm. and, and just like the the soaps mm -hmm. and they're so, they're so scenty. Like they're, they have such beautiful scents, really mm -hmm. unique scents. And so 
I appreciate your uh, care with with all of the different like um, uh, with our sense. You know, it's like invoking because that's another way of uh, bringing people into the moment is invoking through the senses. Mm. You know, it's like oh, that smell is so amazing, and then mm-hmm. it's like we become present again. And yeah, and the feeling on the skin as well, mm-hmm. and I. I cater to really sensitive skin and people who can't normally use um, industrial made soaps because mm-hmm. of the, yeah, the chemical sudsing agents or the sulfates or anything of those um, that there's a lot in industrial soaps that aren't necessary in my eyes. <laughs> I appreciate that. And mm-hmm. I, I feel like that's a real gift you're giving people in, in that um you're looking to help them sustain their health and um, their well-being. Well, their well-being health are the same thing, right. but just like being able to have good products is, is uh, you know, looking after their future. Mm-hmm. And then also it's, it's, it's biodegradable, so it won't, yeah, destroy the, the water um, or the, the environment around where it's Excellent. getting into the earth. And, um, yeah, having that, just standing behind these things are really important to me to really be, if I'm going to be selling it at a market and face to face with people, I want to be like so confident in the work I've put into the products and the work I've put into the book. And and it's it's all kind of coming into uh, fruition. It took a long time, especially with the business, to build up to a place where I'm like, oh, it's actually like more orders are coming in and people are really appreciating it. And and now they're seeing this other side of me, like before I came to Salt Spring and not because I people just knew me as like the soap lady. And now it's like, oh, no, she's a writer, too. Like she's so- <laughs> the soap lady plus. <laughs> yeah. Soap lady, author, podcaster. That's right. We didn't even get into podcasting today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another time we'll have you back on the show. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, is that I'm doing radio, you're doing radio and it's really fun. And um, it would be, I think, a really fun um conversation to have because not many people know what it's like to do radio mm-hmm. and uh, podcasting so yeah another good. time for that yeah, totally. yeah after my trip yeah after your trip yeah but if anyone in um victoria i'm doing my next book launch july uh 20th at so spiral cafe 2019 2019 yeah and july 30th in vancouver and then but they can just look on my website and all the details are there Come out, come out wherever you are. (laughs) Well, thank you, Ali, for coming on to the show. Okay, thanks. Real fun. Okay, bye. I hope this show inspires you to walk to the beat of your own drum. May the stories shared here today inspire us all to see a greater vision of what's possible for our collective future. Want to hear more of these shows? You can find this podcast the Conscious Planet Network, on any podcast search engine, including iTunes or Podbean. Or listen live on your computer every Friday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time by googling islandsradio.com. You can find out more about me, Guyana, at guyanasofia.com. That's spelled G-A-I-A-N-N-A S-O-P-H-I-A dot com. If you know of a special someone who would love this program, then be sure to send it along to them. Thanks for listening to the Conscious Planet Network, broadcasting to you from the Gulf Island Community Radio. See you next time.